What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a very special walk and talk episode of the Hot Pop Boys. I just got the Osmo Pocket 3, so I figured I'd test it out. Uh, today, the article that we're gonna be breaking down is relevant to the street of East Broadway because East Broadway has a lot of Asian supermarkets. And the article that we're talking about that went viral on Reddit is talking about how big conglomerate Asian chains that have developed over time, such as 99 Ranch, H Mart, and even Latino-based ones such as Vallarta are taking over the traditional supermarket space in Southern California, um, but also on the East Coast as well. So we're talking about supplanting things like Albertsons, Ralph's, Vaughn's, and what are the reasons for that? So if you have noticed this in any community that you visited or that you, one that you're living in, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications because we're going to get into the reasons what the article stated, but as well as some of the reasons that I think. So the main uh, reason that the article stated was they were saying that a lot of younger Americans are a lot more open to shopping at Asian markets, specifically the more refined ones with a more refined presentation that would be an H Mart, that would be a 99 Ranch, that would be a Mitsua, in the sense of like, these are big companies now that have very refined marketing. Um, it's very clean. You know, the, the experience has been half Americanized, but the products are still Asian. And a lot of people are open to this in a way that they were previously not. They also said that um, due to the way the economic flow was, that supermarkets surged during the uh, pandemic but then it switched back to restaurants, but now it is switching back again to supermarkets because of hyperinflation. Of course, everybody's been complaining about tipping. Everybody's been complaining about just like how expensive restaurants are getting. Obviously, that's due to the fact that their costs on a lot of shipping and raw goods is going up. But at the end of the day, the end consumer is getting squeezed. That's driving a return back to supermarkets. And then, of course, we are also talking about business mergers and consolidation, you know, Albertsons is from Iowa, then they bought Vons, and then Vons is trying to buy Ralph's, and Ralph's is from Southern California, but they gotta consolidate, because anytime there is business mergers, you just can't have that many stores that you own underneath one umbrella competing with each other. So those are the reasons um, that the article stated. However, I think I have my own thoughts. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree with them. I think that quick service delivery, such as Amazon Fresh, you know, for all the normal items, the normie items that you can even get at a CVS, let alone an Albertsons, Ralph's, or a Vons, you can get that on Amazon Fresh as well, or you can get it from a number of delivery services. You know, obviously they're gonna vary per city. So it, it makes it even, you know, more normalized, but you can't get that for the Asian items. And I also think it's very fun. It's fun to browse for the Asian items in a way that it is not fun to browse at like a Ralph's even anymore. Um, I think that also people want more specialized stores. Even if you look on the Western side, I think people want Sprouts, Trader Joe's, Whole Foods. Obviously, if you're a baller and you want to spend $25 on six pack of eggs, Erewhon, you know, um, it, it's a meme at this point, right? Um, I also think that, you know, Asian supermarkets, ethnic supermarkets such as Viarda, they're almost like a community gathering place in a way that, you know, maybe traditional American, middle America markets were a, a, a gathering place for the American community in the 1930s or 40s or 50s or 60s, but that is perhaps a bygone era. But it, uh, the Asian community might still very much be in that place technically. Um, also, I think that, you know, to be honest, the Asians, you know, the Asian companies, the way they operate, they keep a lot of cash. They're looking for good prices. You know, the American items, they're looking, the Americans, they're looking to sell for good prices because like we said, they got consolidation that they're trying to make happen on a business side. So um, I think that that's just like a business transactional equation aspect of it. Um, I also think who else is gonna replace a bunch of Rosses and Halloween stores and shut down Burlington Co. Factories and TJ Maxx's as you know, retail begins to shut down. Check out the Feezies, we got the Feezies in the back. I just saw some Ame Manier threes. But of course, yeah, they probably, you know, those were from, you know, the real ones are made in Shenzhen too, but also the, the non-real ones. Um, I also think that you get an aspect at ethnic grocers of exploring a new world that you're not gonna get at a traditional American grocery store. Uh, uh, maybe if you were in an Erewhon, you'd be like, oh man, I wish I could get that $18 bottles of kombucha that's like, you know, 
uh, so tiny, but like, you know, that, that that's almost like a luxury voyeurism. We're talking about cultural voyeurism. You can get your Bourdain on um, just by being in these like crazy places that, that, you know, obviously you're seeing a lot of things you didn't grow up with, snacks, products, drinks. The advertisements are using K-pop, C-pop, J-drama, anime characters, you know, just all this stuff where it's like, man, where am I? This is like another planet. So I think that that can contribute also to the higher profitability per square foot that these ethnic markets are turning, uh, that are obviously just like statistically showing up on their balance sheets. Anyway, let's get into the comments section. Um, somebody said, yes, I do think that um, H Mart tends to have the best quality, better than Vaughn's or Rouse. 99 Ranch is 50-50. I mean, I think it varies per one, but yeah, traditionally I would say that H Mart is the most expensive and the most upscale. Uh, however, TNT market, which is an upscale Taiwanese Chinese market, is coming from Canada to the American market. So, um, yeah, you know, there's a variance. I think even 99 Ranch owns like three different verticals that are like branded three different ways. And uh, Mitsuwa, obviously, the Japanese market has always been very nice and expensive. Um, other people were talking about the seafood counter. The seafood counter probably maybe being like, it's like fresher and there's higher turnover because Asians eat more seafood than Western people but it also might be more intimidating. I think that I could agree with that. I could see that, you know, just the veggies are gonna look different. Obviously, like we said, the seafood, very high turnover because a lot of Asian coastal countries, they eat a lot of seafood. However, just the nature of grabbing the fish or the lobster out of the tank and then like either killing it or giving it to you live in a bag. Yeah, I could see that culturally just being really, really, really different compared to like what you are expecting from a Western market. Um, some people were saying, you know, what about once these Asian markets become the thing that they were, that like they're putting out of business? Like once H Mart or 99 Ranch becomes such a multi trillion dollar business, they start putting out Asian mom and pops out of business. And um, I do think there's a couple aspects of that. I do think that's the flow of capitalism, but also like it probably won't, you know, it pro probably won't get to that level if it ever does, honestly, for like another 20, 30 years. But It'll be interesting to see. I don't know if you can become like too big to the point where people don't like you anymore. But yeah, I mean, it's possible. But I, I don't know. I just think that that probably is gonna be pretty far down the road if we get there. And um, yeah, long story short, guys, you guys can check out the article below. There's a couple good quotes in there. Um, basically, it was saying like, you know, people just do not want to eat Salisbury steak anymore. But you know, I'm not gonna lie. People are probably eating Salisbury steak like in the 40s and the 50s so i don't know how i don't know when the last time that's been popping was maybe 1980s late 80s but anyway um i just think that america's changing i think with the class mobility that asian americans have had it's going to increase the cultural profile once the cultural profile increases you're folding in different consumption demographics that weren't normally eating asian products you know what i mean like they, they think it's cool now like a lot of kids maybe back in the day you know you saw all those forums and symposiums and academia talking about, oh man, my kids get made fun of for bringing dumplings and chopsticks and soy sauce or whatever, whatever to school. But now kids probably in 2023, obviously it varies what neighborhood you're in and what socioeconomic class and what kind of crowd your kid is hanging out with. So I would say obviously a larger ratio than ever, they want to try it. They want to have the Asian items, you know? So at the end of the day, I just think that it's a dope, it's dope. I mean, you know, it's cool to see that these Asian markets, ethnic markets, even Vallarta, I've been there a couple times. They have great carniceria and they got great beef and they got great guacamole and stuff like that. So it's like, it's cool to see them finding their place in America. And I do think a lot of these trends are gonna be spearheaded in Southern California first, um, as well as select parts of the Northeast because those are the most like, I guess, ethnic enclave heavy zones where uh, Bay Area as well, where people are kind of like getting into not just first gen in large numbers, but maybe even second and third gen in large numbers as well. And I'll be interested uh, to see how these, you know, H Marts, 99 ranches and different things evolve. Are they gonna change the seafood counter to be something that more fits like how a Westerner likes to eat sea a crab? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Hope you guys had fun on this walk and talk episode of the Hot Pop Boys. I had fun making it, testing out the Osmo Pocket 3. Anyway, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace.